The public relations officer of the Nigeria Police Force, DCP Frank Umba, says the special anti-robbery squad, a special arm of the force, cannot be scrapped because of the ongoing fight against crimes in the country. He said the force is currently reforming the operations of SARS officers nationwide to curtail their excesses. He spoke on Tuesday morning during an Instagram live chat with Nigerian artist Aziz Fashola, also known as Naira Mali. He encouraged Nigerians to take video recordings of SARS operatives who abuse their fundamental human rights as long as it's safe to do so. Our guest is Dixon Osaje, security expert. Thanks for joining us sir, tonight, Dixon. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, why has it been so difficult for the police to give a decisive reform on SARS? Because we've seen that there's been several ban on SARS, you know, for several years now. Oh, well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, all over the country now, uh, information flying around and uh, people are happy, some are not happy uh, because of the... Uh, uh, what they call uh, it authority of the IGP, of the Nigerian Police Force. You know, uh, time and again, I have said it, that security management is complex and systematic. It's not about disbanding or banding that makes things get right. It's all about having the operational procedures in place that's going to govern the success of these security agencies. Uh, some years ago, uh, last year or so, I think we understand that uh, SARS were banned or were given a specific uh, operational procedures. Now, this is my take. I am not in support of the action of the IGP uh, because we must be very careful not to demoralize guys that put their lives on the line to serve this great nation. Oh, yes, the Nigerian uh, police stars have done so well. Uh, the IGP tactical squad has done so well. Other areas have done so well. Uh, we, must not, we must not erase uh, the actions of some bad elements uh, to take it for disbandment. What the Nigerian police really need is a foundational cleansing. Foundational cleansing in the sense that they need to go back to the drawing board and analyze and assess what the problem really is. Uh, what is the problem? Uh, these guys uh, we must, we had some reports that uh, they are being uh, unprofessional. Now, what is the solution? The solution is not disbandment or calling them back to the base or asking them not to uh, go on patrol. You know, uh, when the modern day policy was founded by Sir Robert Pierce, it stated very clearly in the policies that uh, the effectiveness of the policing system is best uh, described in the absence of crime. Now, for you to have a very good uh, aspect, of, aspect of crime, absence of crime, I beg your pardon, uh, patrolling principle is very essential. Uh, if you want to have a, a special squad not patrolling again, it's going to fall back uh, in a negative mood because basically for now, Nigeria is in on a high state of insecurity. Our threat level is very high. From the east, west, south, and north, the security threat level is very high. Uh, we need most of these hard guys to be on the way to protect us from those criminal elements. But the government, the police, needs to train these guys again and again and again. Then another aspect of the uh, police, policing error is uh, crime and punishment. They don't have an effective punishment in place for the police force, for the police system. So I had expected the IGP to look into punishment and reward about these guys, not calling them back to the base. If he does that, then the police will be responding after the occurrence of an incident. And in security, you're supposed to go before the loss, not after the loss. All right, Dixon, the CP has said SARS is needed to fight crime despite their many assaults on citizens. And just like you said, you know, the fact that uh, you shouldn't demoralize others who are putting their lives on the line. So how can the Nigerian police force uh, be able to separate the weeds from the chaff here? I know you did mention training, but what else can the Nigerian police force do to sort this out? All right, you see, um, there's what we call an effective punishment measures. You know, most times why uh, most of these uh, police guys carry out their action at will is because there are no uh, consequences. Uh, that is where command negligence comes to play. So I had expected the IGP to address command negligence. These guys are responsible uh, to some particular DPOs. They are responsible to area commanders. They are responsible to uh, commissioner of police and also their uh, various heads. So for me, I think uh, the problem here is command negligence, you know, and uh, superiority management. If we have an effective command and control system in the policing system, 
whereby people who are supposed to protect us turn back to become a threat to the society are dealt with and show the way out of the system, that is going to serve as a specific and general deterrence. You know, the essence of punishment is to have an effective, specific, and general deterrence. Why? So that people who are still in the system, who have plans to go ahead and misbehave and put Nigerian lives at risk, arrest innocent Nigerians, detain innocent Nigerians, if they are being dealt with, they are going to sound as a deterrence measure to others who are serving. That is where offense and punishment comes to play, because the psychology of offense and punishment is very essential to the developmental process of policing. So for me, what I want the police system to do now is to go back to the drawing board and activate an effective policing policies and procedures. And the last time the Nigerian Police Act was being amended was about uh, uh, four or five years ago, and there was a new one now, which I believe. But the Police Act we are using now is about, it's about, about 60 to 70 years act. So with a total revamp of the Nigerian Police Act, mm. when we revamp that act, then we'll be able to integrate policing system with community policing system and the society. Because if the police continue in this way, they will not get information from the society. Mm. And that will be detrimental to their survivors. Interesting, Dixon. You've been talking about carrots and sticks, you know, rewarding those who are putting their lives on the line and doing the actual work of securing Nigerians and punishing, uh, you know, people who are, uh, you know, uh, being uh, you know, pests, basically, in the system. But then when you check about FSARS, you know, on the internet, you find several videos of harassment, police brutality. And in most of those videos, you find out the perpetrators of these crimes, especially these officials, their faces are showing, their names, their name tags are showing but there's hardly any you know anything done about it does this then go back to our justice system in the country the fact that these guys are not being punished for their crimes okay uh you know from the nigerian administration of criminal justice uh the first point of contact is the police the second point of contact is the court the third point of contact is the prison now in any given criminal activity the police is the first point of contact and management of disruptive behavior is very essential you know uh, because sometimes uh, our citizens also need to know how to address or speak with the police or uh, the security agency. I was in the bank some few weeks back during the corona lockdown. I saw a lady point blank with my own eyes insulting a military officer, a major, a female military major. And I look up to her and say, Madam, why are you insulting this lady? These are people that put their life on the line. Even if she, she skipped the queue, they're supposed to give her that honor. But she never skipped the queue and you're insulting her. You know, our people, our citizens too, we have an issue, ego issue, you know. We want to measure our strength with that of the policing. We don't want to speak to them uh, uh, calmly. And the truth is, when you see any security agent on the road, you're supposed to respect that person. No policeman is a mad person. No soldier is a mad person. But one thing I must tell you for free is that nobody on uniform would like to be intimidated. And that is the reality. And when you want to intimidate people on uniform, and because you're a big man or you're a big man's child or wherever you are, they will want to descend on you, and that is not the proper way anyway. But for me, what I would advise now going forward is that our police should activate uh, three uh, major aspects of investigative process so that they will be able to curtail all these uh, menace. Uh, first of all, the IG should establish a compliance uh, uh, a monitoring team. Okay. They also need to comply, uh, uh, also need to activate a misconduct monitoring team right. so that in the case of any uh, complaints like this, this uh, misconduct monitoring team and compliance monitoring team will be able to curtail a misconduct in process and uh, non-compliance in, in progress. All right, this Dixie. is going to put the police in check. Thank you so much for those suggestions. We do hope the police are listening and would indeed take action. Thank you. Thanks uh, for that thoughts on security. And Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.